Some of you may have heard of the Great Reset. What's the Great Green? What is the Great Reset? Great Reset. Um. So that. Is it a version I, of the New World Order? Is that what they're changing the name to? I. I. I from. You know how I feel about political outlooks and differences in political outlooks. I don't think it's a weakness. I think it's a strength. And I think America needs to get back to being able to have a conversation with people who don't agree. We learn so much from each other when we do that. You, I think, are going to hear and learn and question and disagree or perhaps really agree. Um... Like very few podcasts will uh, push you to. You're going to learn an awful lot. One of the biggest influences in the publishing industry in this country is the uh, Central Intelligence Agency. They commission and have written and published and circulate around 200 books of political propaganda a year. We'll start early on when their minds are young and we will target their children and what the children love most, sweet things. When their teeth decay, we will fill them with metals, and that will kill their mind and steal their future. When their ability to learn has been affected, we will create medicine that will make them even sicker and cause other diseases for which we, can, uh, we will create even yet more medicine. We will render them docile and weak before us by our power. They will grow de depressed, slow, and obese, and when they come to us for help, we will give them more poison. Will focus their attention towards money and material goods so that they so that they may never connect with their inner self. We will distract them with fornication, external pleasures and games so they may never be one with the oneness of it all. And every professor in our universities knows that you have got to use these political propaganda books from the CIA as your teaching textbooks, which makes the CIA the biggest publisher in the United States, secretly. And, of course, there is no Central Intelligence Agency. It's a branch of the British Secret Intelligence Service, SIS, which was established in 1694 as a necessary adjunct of the Bank of England. It began at the very beginning, at the first meeting of the National Security Council in 1947, following the passage of the National Security Act, which established the CIA and the National Security Council. The NSC as the highest policy-making body in matters of foreign affairs and national security. So uh, we have never had a government intelligence service. What we have is a branch of the Bank of England. Chaired by the President of the United States, having as statutory members the Vice President, the Secretaries of State and Defense, and various other high-level officials, including the director of what today is known, had a different name then, but what today is known as the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. The CIA is simply an instrument, and has been all through these years, an instrument of this National Security Council and the President himself. Well, look, you, you want to have a next level conversation. We're not going to be able to just, you know, I don't want to have Dick uh, Tarzan, uh, you know, talking about Jamie, good, you, bad, all that kind of stuff. Right, okay. It turned out that that concept really didn't work very well. Implanted conscious energy is a very potent and effective technique where electromagnetic signatures are generated inside a mind. Identity is much more powerful, so it's a much more effective means of introducing Marxist ideas. And what I've said is, and I'm proud that that's what I do. An intellect-based mind is easier to mind control. This is done partly because complex emotions are harder to simulate for certain people for the shadow government. Emotions are harder to get right than an intellect-based mind for mind. And control. as an algorithm becomes powerful, whoever owns the algorithm may be able to concentrate fantastic amounts of wealth and no human can afford to defend themselves in that market. Correct. So we're in an interesting situation. In the coming weeks. 
Any conscious energy in existence can be reproduced by exotic electromagnetic technology. starts with income inequality, mm -hmm. but it quickly goes on to what happens when we automate away so many people's jobs who aren't anticipating that they will be the ones who lose their jobs. Um, a lot of professionals, a lot of um, you know, lower end, more routinized types of professions. Um, what will they do? You know, what, what will they see as their self-worth if they're not employed, if they don't have um, a sense of community that we all get from going to work every, every day? Potential for this to turn more um, I don't know, violent makes it sound too extreme, but to go from just a, a ballot casting exercise to something more. When you say, I'm a free market guy, if you want to save capitalism, you're going to need hyper-capitalism coupled to something like hyper-socialism because the redistributive aspects mm -hmm. of capitalism change character with, with uh, the multiplier of uh, algorithms. You're, applying, you're appealing to a very old complex. When I say... Um, it's done through infiltrating or recruiting people, indigenous people, inside these organizations, giving them money for the organization, but also paying them a salary as a control factor. Control is a word that every CIA trainee learns early on. It means long-range control of the natural resources, the labor and the markets of other countries, but it also means control over individuals. And those personal salaries are a control factor. Today's podcast. And that's, but that's a huge issue, and that's the thing that's got to stop. Even in 2008, right? So we have this enormous uh, economic collapse in 2008. The housing market sinks, and these uh, uh, derivative mortgage uh, things go down. And the world economy grinds to a halt. Thousands of people lose their job, foreclosures all over the place. So they come in, and they pump billions of dollars into the organizations that sunk the fucking ship in the first place. So there you have it. We'll go from lockdowns to lock-ins. Shut down your factories, that's good. Stop people using transport, that's good. Empty the streets. And hey presto, climate change is solved. But before The Guardian go rushing off screaming conspiracy theory, yes, yes, it's a conspiracy, but it's not my conspiracy, it's theirs. And while the loveys are all in a tiz, maybe The Guardian might like to look into this conspiracy theory. In the 30s and 40s, every college student got to recite The Wasteland. Which they did in 1913. In uh, 1920 in Paris. And that became the most famous uh, poem of the 20th century. It's not mentioned very much today, but uh, through the Democratic Party in Washington, D.C., and uh, it became a law of Congress. Well, in the 1930s and 1940s, you really had to be a very active, outspoken pro-communist to get anywhere. Israel actually plans to exterminate the entire Arab Muslim population of the world. And the, the Muslims know this. And this is why their jihad, jihadism and their excesses have some basis in reality. Uh, they're trying to survive. And. Uh, Hemingway had been a hack newspaper uh, writer for a, a, a firm called, it was a newspaper called the Moose Jaw Herald in Saskatchewan, Canada. That was his stellar background to become a writer and uh, uh, cultivated the establishment, which is the greatest swindle ever known in history, where a, a group of private bankers conspired criminally to take over the money and credit of the United States. Yeah. That's where the money goes. And I remember asking uh, the Treasury Secretary at the time, you know, this is a mortgage question, right? Because they, the derivatives made it like the geometric problem. So if they're bundling mortgages and 8% of those mortgages go underwater, 
it sinks the derivatives market, which is trillions of dollars as opposed to billions of dollars. So I said, you know, with all that money, what if you just made those mortgages that were underwater whole? Because the moment you do that, doesn't that fix your derivative problem? Don't you, haven't you just made, and plus then people get to keep their houses. And what he said to me was, you can't do that because of moral hazard. Huh? So moral hazard is a theory that you can't incentivize bad behavior. What matters is what we know in our hearts. You can take the mark and not believe in what it stands for. Understanding how power and inequality is sustained can perhaps give us opportunities for democracy and equality in today's world. Revelation very clearly warns us about taking the mark of the beast. Now there's a long tradition of sociological research that documents the existence of a dominant ruling class in the United States. How do we know for sure that God himself didn't raise up the prince to usher in the millennial age? Like New York, Chicago, London, Paris, Munich, I went to college there, Tokyo, Singapore. The members of the financial corps take active part in global policy groups. So what he's saying is the people that took out mortgages on their homes that went underwater, that's their fault. So you can't bail them out because that would be sending a hazardous message morally about the economy. So I said, what's the moral hazard of then get making the people that actually blew up the economy whole again? What's that? How is that not moral hazard? And he said, the plane was on fire and we had to land it. Wow. But they lit the plane. That, they were the ones who lit the plane on fire. How are you? You're rewarding them for that. I've I've heard both sides of that argument. I've heard the argument that, that no nothing's too big to fail, let it fail, and then I've heard the argument that if it did feel fail, it'd be so catastrophic. Yeah. Yeah. It's. But I'm saying it wouldn't have failed, so it was a failure because they bundled. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. They did but, it all to themselves. That almost seems too logical, though. <laughs> that's right that's kind of part of what's the problem with all this but that's what i was saying like yeah. when you say, oh, that's moral hazard i was just like i don't even know what to do with that incentivizing bad behavior doesn't count when you're the ones who tank the economy i mean it's not it's like what you're talking about today it, like if someone tried to say that these small businesses that are going under because of the covid sanctions because everybody's been locked down rather if if those people need to pull themselves up by their bootstraps it's a great example why that analogy sucks Cause like there's nothing to do man you can't work there's nothing you, you like what do you want them to do there's no opportunity it's everything shut down if you go under at this time it's right. not your fault it's one of the rare if times if i'm the government right now here's something i could do that's like again like it seems like a simple solution which is like just suspend and extend the united states uh colonies when they won the american revolution they set up a governing uh document called the Articles of Confederation of the United States of America and that was our sole constitution but then these Masons got together in 1787 and said we need a um, instrument of federal power and we need an instrument able to borrow money and repay it and that's why they re rewrote the Articles of Confederation and that's why they did it in secret because they didn't dare tell anybody that that's what they wanted to do, to set up a dictatorial federal power, which the Supreme Court was invented to maintain federal power. The Supreme Court always says uh, that uh, the rule of law is the United States. Well, the rule of law is simply the rule of bandits who will control the United States. That is the rule of law. And if, if you violate that law, you'll be killed. Yeah. Suspend and extend. You know what? We're going to do a six month suspend. Nobody is going to. And if the landlords need to be helped out, that's where we'll focus. We'll make sure that the landlords don't go under from uh, having to pay too much in taxes or having to pay too much in repairing. Yeah. Till we get past this moment, because they keep saying, well, we got to, you know, we got to uh, uh, reopen the economy. We are the economy. Right. There is no corporations, maybe people, but they corporations still can't catch COVID. We can. 
So I don't understand why they don't do something that seems simple and addresses like a real concern, grassroots on, on the on the floor. Again, you're speaking too logically. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's just a it's such a difficult time too politically because. It, the the ideas get segmented into left or right right like even the ideas of how to address covid how to address the economy how to address all the, the everything becomes politicized so of course he was totally ignored by everybody except the public the pub, public life uh, his work and i found out the entire history of the federal reserve system and they've kept it ever since because they set it up as a monopoly so that the stock of the federal reserve banks could never be traded publicly it could only be handed down in a family, or if a corporation bought the bank that owned it, they became possessors of the stock. You've never been able to buy, since 1914, you've not been able to buy a share of Federal Reserve Bank stock on the market anywhere. Well, David Rockefeller did during the 1940s. He said the reason he was so pro-communist at that time was because the communists collected their debts at the point of a gun, which he didn't say. And John D. Rockwell was one of the biggest holders, and he had his stock uh, placed under the Rockefeller Foundation, so it can never be bought or sold, so it's secure forever. And the other uh, people who bought control in 1914, they were the Schiff family and the Warburg family, and of course they still have their own uh, family uh, fortunes, and uh, they, can, they have a controlling interest in Federal Reserve Bank stock in various Federal Reserve Banks. It's not all in one Federal Reserve Bank. You've got to get back from the brink. I've got a, an outstretched hand and it's been outstretched for four years. And I'm, I've waited now, hopefully strategically, to talk to who have always voted Democratic, which is, love you. You, you guys are a part of what makes America great. And I speak on behalf of a large number of people who have no voice, because hopefully this is somewhat electrifying. We love you. There's certain aspects that I can't do because my left of centerness doesn't allow me to do it. And we can't go down this route. And you have to realize that the cult-like aspect of Donald Trump may have been necessary to break the cabal. We benefit from being a great country and a good country. And I've tried to, to, to do both, but we have to have a conscience that has been denying all kinds of truth. I've called it the disc. I've talked about the gated institutional narrative. It's over. The Donald Trump thing has to mutate into something that is pro-America, that is not based on a cult of personality. I know that many of you hate him and support him because he was the only way to stop the denial. Because you can understand that uh, it's very difficult to get millions of people to run out and kill each other when they have absolutely no bone of contention whatsoever. In fact, all the wars have had... See, Ezra, that's why Ezra got into this entire thing and that's how he got me into it. He was living in Paris during World War I, and he had many young writers and artist friends who were drafted into the armies, and uh, some were for Germany and some were for France, and uh, uh, they were killed. And he couldn't understand how these great talents, great brilliant young men, uh, died for nothing. And when he spent years of studying the situation in eight languages uh, all over Europe, he found out uh, that bankers make wars to create debt. If they want war, I'll give them war. There is no opportunity to save the United States. I, I said that Donald Trump was an existential risk at the beginning, the fabric of the United States. Give me my due. Tell me that I'm not wrong about that. 
Well, I think it's hard. You know, it's hard to know what the anecdote is when you don't really know what you're, you're facing, right? You'll get fat right. all right. And A lot of people who won't be retrained, can't be retrained, who will just want to cling to what they used to be doing. I think that's going to be a challenge for everybody. And there's no clear answer. Security Please issue. Please identify yourself. As the 19th century British philosopher Oberon Herbert the individual is king, and all other things exist for the service of the king. Or as he further explained, the individual is included in many wholes, his school, his college, his club, his profession, his town or county, his church, his political party, his nation. But he is always greater than them all. All these various wholes, without any exception, exist for the sake of the individual. They exist to do his service. They exist for his profit and use. The conviction that the individual is king informed the ideas of the Enlightenment thinkers of the 17th and 18th centuries and led to a rapid awakening to the vital connection between freedom and the individual rights of life, liberty, and property. He'll get fat, all right. Speak out on the cloning. He did, um... He, he did try to do something about it. I know because I was there and I saw it. And it's pretty hard to talk about. The secret societies have turned it into a business with the belief that if it can be controlled, profited off of, managed, recorded, and turned into a process, that's it's essentially not power. Mean, it's essentially it's cool. higher levels of knowledge and being, and to be able to command in this realm but it goes against uh, a higher will, power, higher form of spirituality that we basically know as love. What it breaks down into, it basically all comes down to whatever this black goo substance is. I was informed, I, I talked to people, I talked to them physically, I met with them in my life physically. There are the highest levels of power that we have in any form of governmental control, or religious control, or even spiritual control other than the loving aspect. And it comes down to the fact that the process of awakening by utilizing the darker forces drains our heart chakra. It, it shuts it off and stops it from being able to influence our mind. And I am yep. so afraid that it takes one lunatic or one group of lunatics on either side, it won't matter, and the world changes. Do you believe we're th that close? to virtually starve them out. They have to make some accommodations. Accommodations? I've had my fill of Chinese and so-called local resistance. I'll have no more of these. I am their god. They will worship me or they'll burn. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Bibles. We believe that Jesus Christ is coming back soon, but we know very little. And then we have the protectors of capital. That's the Atlantic Council and their use of the military intelligence, NATO, and the U.S. military empire worldwide to protect capital investment and its free flow. Yes, Christians. <laughs> We're all new believers. And we know that there is something up there looking down on us um, um, from space. Christians. Yes, Christians.
Bibles. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. But they will not do it. They can't do it. It, it, it can't, it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's no wonder why you read through their documents uh, that you see something entirely different than what the New York Times is telling you. It's insane. Nazi rules going over to a uh, Nazi scientist going over to Antarctica and Admiral Byrd sending uh, 4,600 Marines and then coming back saying UFO ships shot down his, his planes and chopped a warship in half with a laser. If that's all a conspiracy, then all of our hi history is just one big, you know, not a conspiracy but a theory and it's inaccurate, then all of our history is inaccurate, whether we're, we think it is one way or the other. Because our symbols all throughout history, all the way to ancient Egypt. You can look, you can see it if you open your eyes. Um, and, um, so that is the story. We were told, we were like debriefed. That's what they do to people. They just mess with you and show you the truth. And then if you don't tell people or if you don't do anything positive with it, they use that as proof to say, look at these humans, look at the people, even if they're not, you know, something else, if there's people, they say, look at these people that they don't even fucking care about themselves. Basically, non, uh, like silence or inaction, according to them, is consent. And that kind of is. If somebody's in your house making a fucking sandwich, and you literally don't know this person, but you just go back to bed, don't say anything, you're fucking allowing it. That's how it works. Um, it's basically that simple, because we've been here growing and learning, and essentially ignoring all the truths and the, the, the symbols that come out and all the whistleblowers, even though the people that tell us to ignore it feed us poison and bullshit and degrade the society uh, emotionally, even spiritually and psychically, they destroy the economy, um, change up the laws to fit themselves, push poison and bullshit out the media, polluted the education system, push poison through the um, uh, medicinal system, the judicial system is corrupt to uh, fucking put prisoners in power, I mean, uh, corrupt in power, and they put the people that try to help, basically, wherever they, <laughs> wherever they go. It's, it's all right in front of us. No one's ever fucked with you with, other than allowing you to ignore the fact that this whole fucking thing is happening right in front of all of humanity all of the time. It might not be directly in front of our faces everywhere, but if you live in another country where you can see these things going on and you can look at how this pattern of dominance through techno technology and media is fucking spreading faster than anything, any force on the world. It's spreading faster than human panic. That's because it's controlled, and of course it's controlled by those with money and, and power to do such a thing, but you look at the fruits that are produced, whether these people that are leading us down this path with technology and goods and economy and this that are actually intending to help us, or whether they're saving the good shit for themselves and giving all the poison to the people. This is, this is amazing. If what you're going to do is to talk about something above the Supreme Court, what you're talking about right now is you're talking about a new country that you're hoping to fund. But there is no opportunity to save the United States. But there is no opportunity to save the United States.